it is time for some more nerd math. This time we're talking about the Martian and what I want to know is how fast does the habitat module of the Hermes have to rotate to imitate 1g of gravity for the crew? Let's work it out. When it comes to looking at the concept of artificial gravity in space or in science fiction, centrifugal force is a really clever way to do it. So what we're talking about here is when you have something that is rotating around a central axis point, there will be a force felt on an object that pushes outwards. So the force is pushing the crew out away from the center axis of the ship towards the roof of the habitat module, which causes them to feel the sensation of a gravitational push or the sensation of a force of gravity. Now, in order for it to generate 1G of gravity, it will have to rotate at a certain speed to maintain that feeling of that force. So we can look at the centrifugal force equation and from that we can see that it relates to the mass of the object, the uh, angular velocity, which is the speed of its rotation, and the radius, which is the distance from the central axis point to where the object is. Now, because we want to imitate 1g of gravity, then we know that we're looking at the base equation or Newton's base equation of F equals ma, where a is the gravitational acceleration that we feel here on Earth. So just pull that in a little bit. Now, if F equals ma, then a itself is just F over m. So we know that that's the gravitational acceleration we want to maintain, so we can substitute that into our centrifugal force equation in place of F over M, which means that the gravitational acceleration is equal to the angular velocity squared times the radius of the centrifuge. Now we know what G is, it's 9.81 meters per second squared. We want to know what omega is, so we need to know what the radius is. We don't know this, but looking at the movie, we can figure it out. When we have the scene where Beck is doing the EVA and Beth Johansson is rotating around the habitat module watching him, we can very clearly see Beth standing in the module and we can see the central axes, which means all we need to do is figure out how many Beth Johansons does it take to make up the radius of the centrifuge. And it works out at 9.75 Beth Johansons. Now we know that Kate Mara, the actress who plays Beth Johansson, is 1.57 meters tall, which means that the radius of the centrifuge has to be around 15.3 meters. That means that we can work out what the angular velocity is and it comes out at roughly 0.8 rads per second. Now that probably means absolutely nothing to you, and <laughs> that's okay. But we can do two things with this angular velocity. We can work out what the speed of rotation is, and we can work out what the linear velocity would be. So let's start with the speed of rotation. So from, from the angular velocity, we can work out a frequency of rotation. And from that, we can work out the period of rotation. So we can calculate that the period for one revolution is 7.8 seconds. This means that the habitat module does one full rotation every 7.8 seconds. Now, obviously this doesn't actually happen in the movie. If it did, she would just be flitting around super fast while Beck is doing the EVA. Some things we accept for the sake of storytelling is fine. But in order to generate 1G of gravity, it would have to be rotating around at 7.8 meters, or at 7.8, the no. It would have to do one full revolution every 7.8 seconds. Now, in order to put that into something that makes maybe a little bit more sense or is a bit more intuitive to us, we can work out what the linear velocity is. Now, when we say linear velocity in this case, we're talking about what the tangential velocity is. Basically, what we're saying is if something broke and the habitat module was to fly off into space, what velocity would it have? How fast would it go off into space? And we can work that out using the angular velocity and the radius of the centrifuge. And that comes out to being a velocity of around 12.25 meters per second. That's around like 27 miles per hour or like 44 kilometers per hour. So it might actually not sound that fast. To me, rotating around every seven seconds is really, really fast, <laughs> but it might not actually appear that fast or feel that fast for the astronauts if they get used to it. And it's actually a pretty reasonable rotation and it makes a lot of sense. 
It's also roughly about the exact same size and rotation that is happening on the Discovery 1 in 2001 A Space Odyssey. So that's how fast the centrifuge on the Hermes needs to rotate at in order to create 1g of gravity for the crew. A uh, question for you for next time round is how long do you think humans could survive in space without gravity?